There's so many dimensions to the question of whether you should hit someone first. I thought what I'd do is just simply look at some YouTube videos just to see what people are saying and thinking. Okay, one of the things a lot of experts tell you when somebody is trying to come up and mess with you like at a bar or something, is they go into your defensive ready stance. A lot of times it looks something like this. You know, the guy's at the bar, he's giving you a hard time and you're here like, no dude, I don't, want, I don't want to fight you, I don't fight you. Or even if you're at to the side like, look, no, I don't want to fight you. It can still, the way that you position your body can seem offensive. And to somebody that's drunk at the bar especially, when they're... Actually, that's a good point, actually. So your defensive posture sometimes can be antagonistic. The way you actually posture to defend yourself can actually be quite easily read by the bad guy. Their brain's not operating the right way. They can actually look at your visual cues and see, oh, this guy wants to fight. They're not even processing, I don't want to fight. They're looking at your visual cues. So if you're like this, no, dude, I don't want to fight you, you're already starting to bring the fight on from there. So what you want to do... Actually, that's a good point. So it just literally reinforced the same point of the fact that you're bringing your hands up is actually reinforcing the situation. It's kind of more of like a submissive surprise attack from here, okay? So the one thing you do is when, when the guy's, guy's getting up in your face, you want to turn to the side. Now when you do that, you've already, came, you already closed the distance because from here, I have to reach out and strike from back here. If I turn my body, then already I'm in, a, I'm in a better stance defensively and then also my striking arm is much closer to my target. I have to disagree slightly with that. I mean, it's good advice turning sideways, but the problem is it contradicts his first point because turning sideways is blading off to the side and it's always going to be taken as a fighting stance. If you've got someone who's already antagonized and already being aggressive and you blade off to the side, you're essentially not being submissive what you're doing is you're being aggressive. So yes, if you turn your left shoulder forward and you've got that forward, you can actually reach with your first, but you haven't got the full rotation of power unless you've got a lot of short distance power. That's the first problem. If you want to throw your right cross, you're going to have to rotate that shoulder. And the problem with rotating the shoulder is that the bad guy who's already antagonized, who's already taken an issue with you and you've bladed off to the side, even if you're trying to do it in a submissive way, is going to get the read on your strike as well. Now the secret here with the submissive surprise attack is to is in what you do with your hands and your shoulders to really be submissive. So from here it's like, dude, I don't want to fight. You know, the hunching of the shoulders is a visual cue that we have in the animal kingdom that says this guy is a, a panty waist and he's not going to fight me. Yeah, actually that's a good point. Hunching the shoulders can be perceived as submissive, but also good fighters hunch their shoulders and drop their chin. So hunching your shoulders and dropping your head is a submissive posture, which he actually missed a drop in the head. Dropping the head actually is quite clever because what you do when you drop your head, if the guy tries to headbutt you, he's actually going to hit the top of your head. I've said that many times in my own videos. But actually hunching your shoulders and dropping your chin actually gives the fighter some protection. So again, it's a bit a little bit, it's a little bit of a contradiction because what's going to happen is the guy's going to be further antagonized again you're escalating the situation. You've bladed off to the side, you've lifted your shoulders, and you put your hands up. It's, it's quite a dangerous thing to do. So like, look dude, I don't wanna fight. So you hunch up your shoulders and it looks very, very submissive. You can also catch him with your eyes. You don't look him straight in the eyes, you look off to the side. You can always get those visual cues out of the side of your eye. Out, out of the side of your eye. Looking to the side actually does give the victim persona. It looks like you're scared. I actually disagree with that. I think you have to be confident, but not scared. Not give someone a victim persona when you're actually trying to defend yourself because what it can do is further energize and empower the aggressor. So looking away and looking down and trying to use your periphery to catch them is a little bit of a gamble, it's a bit of a risk. Try doing that in a nightclub. Uh, you try doing that in a dark environment, pretty pretty much of a risk. So you want all eyes on cue. You really want to know, is this guy on his own? Has he got friends? Where are the potential weapons? Where are the dangerous spots? What are the improvised weapons, in other words? Can the guy pick up a bottle, a chair? So looking away, it might de-escalate the situation, but almost certainly what it will do, it will empower the aggressor. From here, you hunch up your shoulders. The other thing you want to do is talk with your hands. You want to get this guy used to seeing your hands moving. Talking with your hands. I love that. Brilliant piece of advice. Uh, talking with your hands allows you often to get into position. So if you can use your hands and move around, 
okay you can actually get to an angle to the side of the person so you can blindside them almost by using your hands so you hide behind your hands it's hands you want to get this guy used to seeing your hands moving because if they're stationary all of a sudden when you want to strike his visual cues are going to pick up something's coming toward me but if you're moving your hands in nervous circular patterns like this he's already registering movement so if you say look dude i don't want any, i don't want any fights i don't want to get i just came here for a good time hey look, let me buy you a drink okay is that cool at that point if he says no that ain't cool that's when you launch your strike if he says cool Good sound advice. I would say generally though, just be careful with the hand waving thing because you do have to get a balance between appearing too nervous and appearing to be a victim. Cool, then hey, you, put, you say like, let me, hey bartender, keep that hand up, bartender, let me buy this guy a drink. But if he says, no, not cool, from here, it's just a straight palm heel right to the face. Sneak attack, boom, straight in. You're already halfway there. If your hands are higher than the person that you're striking preemptively, then you stand a chance of landing. In this case, in this video, the bad guy's already got his fists up. So if you're going to reach with the hand that's closest, you're not only just going to palm your hand in his face, but you're probably going to eat a good solid, in this case, left punch or a solid overhand right. So it's not great advice at this stage. And if you've ever worked in a bar or been in a bar, you know, there's always a lot of people and the, and the space is always quite confined and close. So you'll always find that there'll be people around you. There'll be a bar, there'll be tables, there'll be chairs. So first of all, the gap's unrealistic, but it's still good sound advice. Uh, I would just be wary that if you're going to go with your first strike, your first strike has to be a finishing strike. It has to be a bang, wallop. You hit the guy straight in the throat and you go for him and you follow up rapidly with strikes. It has to be fast, intense and aggressive. So to say that you're just going to turn and put your hand in the guy's face, okay, that's fine if you're going to set up the strike for a big right hand strike, which I hope he's going to show us in the video because I actually haven't watched this to the end. If it's not and that's your first opening gambit, that guy is going to be throwing punches after punches after punches. And one of the things you need to consider is that he's probably had a lot of alcohol. And he's already used to wrestling, so he's not going to see that coming. It's not, he's not gonna be able to defend against that because your action is much, much faster. Especially if he's drunk, he's not even gonna register it soon. So from here, dude, is that cool? He says, no, that ain't cool. Okay, so he actually acknowledged the point that I made, that his, actions are going to be faster and the other guy's reactions are going to be slower because he's drunk and that's a fair point actually that's a really good point i'm going to stand by what i said if you've ever hit someone who's been drunk they actually absorb a lot of punishment because they have a higher pain threshold they have a higher ability to take strikes because they're inebriated so to make the assumption that in in instructing that the guy's drunk you can react faster than they can yes potentially you can do but there's a real risk here that that guy's going to take the punch and start throwing punches wildly at you and straight away because you haven't finished the fight on the first or second or third strike or gone in and dominated the space and this is that this is my main sort of issue with this he's got to get in to control the space and what he's done is he's left it open and used this reliance of pushing his hand forward as he says tricking and sneaking the the, the preemptive strike in Cool, boom. You go in with the, uh, the frontal attack and then follow up with your other strikes. Please take my advice with sincerity. My intention isn't to say this is bad advice. What I'm trying to do is just add some additional information to what's already on screen. Thanks for watching.